Sprinkler Design. This is Revit MEP Sprinkler System Design tutorial number 8. In this tutorial, we would like to focus on how to create spaces in a uh, mechanical floor plan and uh, how we have to determine the name of the different spaces. As you remember from uh, Revit MEP HVAC basic tutorial, uh, we determined that architectural floor plan uh, have their own room names and uh, when we start a project we have the room boundary determined. So as you remember when you just highlight on your floor or actually on your architectural background layout um, you have the linked Revit model architectural shows up uh, on your property um, you know, section on the left side and once you go to edit type uh, you know that from the beginning the recommendation was to have the room bounding um, option activated. So you have activated this, this means that every space in the, um, in the model or on your floor plan uh, is um, determined based on the boundary of the rooms that, that uh, it's surrounded by. So we have this checked mark so that we could determine different spaces. So once you are on one of your floor plans, uh, we are talking on the level one. Um, so if you go to analyze tab on the top and then press on the space uh, command here, uh, your cursor hovers and you, you hover your cursor around various rooms. You see that there's a red highlighted boundaries of the room is showing up. It shows that that space is recognized as one of the rooms and as you can see and as I hover on different spaces the red boundary is automatically formed showing that that's going to be the, the actual separated space uh, that will be created by Revit. This is beneficial from different standpoint and that is that if you do uh, want to determine the, the heating load or cooling load or uh, volume of the space and different other requirement uh, that calculation for the space will come into help when you do other uh, you know analysis and calculation so the focus of this tutorial is basically how to determine the space and how to match its name or the actual space name with the original architectural floor plan name for that specific space. We will need that when we want to develop our plan to, to other levels with the sprinkler system design. Okay, so um, as I said, we will be going to analyze tab into space and then when you hover around one of this space, I'm just getting this corner as an example, and I left click and I put um, you know a space in here and when now I move my cursor around here you see that this cross and this uh, rectangle is showing up it means that this space is determined and is recognized by Revit and when you just click on it once you see the property on the left side is now talking about this space and and there are different elements of the spaces showing up here in terms of electrical load, electrical lighting, uh, dimension, area, parameters, volume. These are all automatic because now you have a parameter for the space. And then there are mechanical, um, you know, characteristic of the room in terms of a specified supply airflow. We don't have any number here yet because we haven't put any. Uh, we haven't done a load calculation, heating cooling load calculation, so basically there is no number here yet. But the basis for that kind of calculation has been formed by creating the space. Okay, then other characteristic for the such as outdoor airflow, exhaust airflow, etc. Then the more important thing, which is a focus of this tutorial, is the identity of this uh, space. For now, as you can see, as a default, the identity number of the room is determined number four, and the name is just simply default space. 
that's not what I want. I want to have my space to be shown as a room name office and the room number 101. This is uh, the room number and room name that is determined by the architect. I want to match my mechanical floor plan to what um, architect has been already adjusted or determined. So in order to do that we have to do one thing and that's the fact that I want to modify my space tagging. So this space tagging is something that has been loaded into this um, to this file as a, a space tag family. What I want to do is I want to double click double click on this logo here or on this um, you know symbol as a space. Basically, I just need to grab it and put the proper space, proper location, and then click on it. So once I click on it, I come to this, um, you know, to this floor or to this uh, page. This page is basically the family of the space tag that I'm been using. So, as you know, the space name was default, and there was no determination of the space name in our floor plan and we want to match with the room name so basically what I want to do is I'm going to just highlight this by clicking once and then go to edit label on the top as you can see I click on the edit table and you see the name here I don't want this actually I need to delete this from here by pressing on this remove parameters from label that arrow red arrow and then come down to find the room name so I'm going to grab the room name from here and press the green arrow and insert in here okay why just go okay so we change it to room name this number 101 I'm going to double click on that and actually click once and then go to edit label and then again for the number I'm just going to take it out and go find room name room number sorry so I'm going to select the room number bring it in here and then okay okay once I've done this I'm going to go load into project and close do you want to save the changes to m space tag uh, family file I say yes and then I actually I let's let's do the I don't want to make a change to this let's do this onto project only I'm going to load into the project so override existing version yes so as you see now whatever number we have here is consistent or the name and the number let's just highlight the space and I'm going to come bring down to see what we had. Yeah, so I have the tag, the space tag consistent with the with the actual room number and room name. Okay. So other thing I want to do is I want to create automatic space for all other spaces. Uh, I don't want to do it one at a time, so I'm going to go to analyze tab again and I'm going to press on space again and then what I want to do instead of doing one at a time on each space I'm going to go to this command called place spaces automatically I'm going to grab all and then 36 space was created automatically and I'm okay with this and remember all this space name are now matching with the actual name that the architect has created originally. The reason being is that we modified our space tagging in this project. We changed it to match with the room name and room number. Remember, okay, I'm going to go close. So I'm going to accept basically we determine all this spaces. So you see, if I highlight here this cross section or this cross is selected as one single so let's highlight this as one single um, um, 
space which is the corridor so this is selected um, yeah as I said we set our space tag to match with our room name and room number that architect determined um, unfortunately if there's any changes happens to architect um, you know background we have to do that manually in here we can't we can't do uh, it's not happening automatically and some of these spaces um, you know as you can see um, architect didn't recognize this as any space but uh, still Revit uh, takes that as a space but you can simply delete that I'm just gonna go grab that because we don't need to determine the you know characteristic for those spaces I'm just gonna like right click and I'm gonna delete spaces which are in the cavities okay and then I do the same yeah it, it basically says that the space was deleted um, from all the model view and I'm okay with that I don't care uh, if this is the understanding so you, you do this with the other other ones as well um, and I'm not going to do that all in here but um, so let's look at this kitchen just going to go to grab this as a space I'm going to grab this as a space and come and see what is this space yeah that's uh, kitchen 110 okay so basically we have determined, as you see, if you hover, all of these spaces are determined. We have already 36 space uh, already determined. I'm going to go to this project browser just to see if I have anything in here. Um, okay, nothing in here in terms of spaces. Yeah, okay. Let's close this. Um, okay, the other thing I wanted to quickly show you is that Sometimes you don't want to show your big uh, space tag on the tag itself. You can just highlight, you can highlight this and move it from there. But it's not happening like that because if you just move it around, it shows with the question mark like this. But you have an option to do that very easily by highlighting it first. Let's go. Once you highlighted it, you can select this command called leader on the top. By selecting leader, now you can easily move it to here. Actually, there was some error here. Let me see what is happening. Let me see what is this mechanical room. Let's pick the space and look at the mechanical room. Um, name. Okay, that's the name. Everything is correct. So we need to to see why there is that. Yeah, because there is okay the space tag outside of its space enable leader or move the tag within its space. I think we enabled the leader, but let's see what. Yeah, enable the leader. Let's move it here. See if anything happens. I'm going to move around. Yeah, it needs to be. It needs to be acted very gently. That's why. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't it doesn't allow it doesn't allow me to do this but it looks like all about setting up this uh, leader properly depending on where you take that leader to Yeah. 
okay we have to you know figure this out I don't want to spend so much time on this it's just uh, there's a possibility that you can even move your tag to outside of your floor or a space by uh, just creating the leader you can simply create the leader and let that happen um, for now it does look like when I go outside it still shows the question mark but in reality uh, you know the the Revit itself um, you know instructs that this is possible if you activate your leader um, yeah, so that's pretty much it related to this tutorial in terms of creating spaces and also, um, you know, labeling um, the spaces to match the architectural floor plan. Thanks very much for watching this video. Uh, if you like uh, videos like this, please uh, do not hesitate to subscribe and press the notification button to see the new tutorial as soon as they are posted. Thank you.